What's up, you guys? It's Kenyo here. I'm going to do a recap of both campaigns because I just wanted to chat about them, talk about them. So they had Kamala Harris v. Pence that just went down, and then they had uh, Biden versus um, Biden, obviously, versus Trump. And they both happened to so say the first one I watched on TV, the second one um, I listened to on the radio, which means I, I missed out because they said there was some sort of uh, they said there was some sort of um, fly that landed on Pence's head. And I missed that. You know, we live in an interesting time. And in OK, so who won? Let's start with that. What, who won which debate? Um, so, uh, Biden versus Trump. Now I'm coming at this nonpartisan because, um, really for me, I am nonpartisan. I don't associate with the party. Um, because really, I don't think that's what political parties are for. Political parties are really only for the organizations there with it. A human being shouldn't be a Democrat or a Republican, you know, Democrat and Republican parties do the work of preparing the candidates and presenting their platforms because it's a very complicated thing. But that doesn't mean that a, a human being should go one way or the other. On you, should, you can't be in a party for life because the platform isn't even decided until later on. They redo the platform all the time, which means that you, you wait until the, the two parties pick who they're picking and then there's more than two parties, by the way. But um, and then you go off whatever's going on with that, which makes me wonder about the legality of. of but I mean, we have a two party system, so that's how it goes. But anyway, um, who won in the first one? Trump v. Um, um, Biden. Trump is obviously very, you know, uh, he's a certain type of person. When I see him, I'm like, OK. This is probably a certain type of a New York person, but then also we know about some of his personal stuff and um, you know questionable um, private life and things like that. And then um, and then we of course we have you know so, but then we have uh, Biden who is you know an older gentleman, much older. I mean not much older, but he's very. He's very aged, you know, and if he wins both elections, he's going to be 86 or something by the time the last, by the time he finishes his last term, which isn't that old. I mean, not really. I mean, people, people go to 86. I don't remember how old Reagan was when he got out of office, but um, anyway, so yeah, uh, who won? See, and then which debate was better too? I'll talk about that a little bit, but um in the first one, I'll say that, you know, Trump, he did, you know, it's interesting because we view the debate separate from the issues. So really, you know, the debate is a, a way for a lot of people to get a better look at the issues because there are a lot of issues. And uh, they do their best to kind of figure out, they do their best to reveal those via the questions that they ask and, and including also things that we might not have heard from their platform, things that are going on currently. So just on a basic issue front, um, I would say that, um, and you know, I don't really want to get into the politics of it. So, you know, I might actually avoid the issues and talk more about um, who I think won the debate. But I mean, when it came to the issues, I'm not he, you know what? I'll, I'll kind of say, I'll kind of say, because I do plan to get involved in politics. So I can't be quiet about it forever. Um, who, you know, I'd like to do more research because I don't really like to talk about things without being as detailed and accurate as possible. Um, I think both um, parties come up with stuff that I like now where the Republicans have been um, somewhat insensitive, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, when it comes to race issues, you know, um, and then, 
um, you know, with certain science things. That's that's one of the things that Republicans are doing a little bit. I'm doing a, a kind of bad job on, and I don't want to say Republicans because it's more specifically part of the Republican Party because Republicans have a lot of good stuff. You know, they do understand how to impact the, the economy positively in certain um, short-term ways that allow for freedom of growth. You look at the difference between trying to set up a business in the UK to trying to set up a business in the US, there's reasons you know, why certain um, socialistic type policies do have negative effects when it comes to you know, business growth and entrepreneurship. But at the same time, you know, the UK is a powerhouse of you know, a bunch of different companies. And then you look at the difference between a California and a Texas, you know, a lot of people are saying now, I was listening to some stuff, Texas is easier to set up business in because of the liberalness with the business. But then you look at, um, you know, some of the long-term things, you know, is it's better for the economy if everyone can participate on it. So when it came to the issues, I think that, um, you know, Biden did a, did a, he did a better job of covering the issues, and that's not something Trump has experience with. But anyway, I'm not gonna get too much into issues. When I think about who won, I think Biden did a very good job. He started off slow, um, so I'm gonna give the first one to Biden because it's just it's better, it's easier to do that. Um, Trump is not a good debater, so that's just what that is. Well, let, let's go over to the 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 Pence Kamala stuff going on. Pence, Kamala, I would say that, um, you know, Pence is a very even speaker, but, you know, he has to do a lot of defending for, for Trump, whether or not that's necessary. I don't know, but that's kind of more where he went on it. I think Kamala did a better job of, of um, you know, establishing herself on the, um, on the stuff, you know, she doesn't have to do as much defending when it comes to Biden, not in a, in a direct way. So, uh, I'm going to give it to Kamala. I'm going to give it to Kamala. Um, Pence, he did a little bit too much. He did, he did some overtalk. Now, the first one was wild. The first one was wild. There was a lot of overtalking. You know, they were both going back and forth over each other. And I was just like, all right, that's, that's what y'all want to make this. Go ahead and make it that. But I don't know if that's what it's going to be all the way through. Um, and then, um, so good. Now we got winners. So we got Kamala and Biden overall one now which debate was better the pence i'm um, the pence kamala debate was much better and we got a much broader look at a bunch of issues we're actually able to hear about stuff it wasn't just like a back and forth weird brawl where people were talking over each other um the i almost thought the trump uh the trump whatever one was more um interesting but that was kind of more like on an entertainment level. Like it was kind of like watching an episode of The Breakfast Club, you know, and it's like Trump was Charlemagne and Biden was, um, Biden was, um, what's the respect on my name guy? No, I'm just joking. If, if, uh, if, if, <laughs> if Trump is uh, Charlemagne, then, then maybe Biden is, I'm just gonna give him a random person. Um, Biden was coming in there like Kanye or something like that. He was like, oh, man, you know, I know this guy's going to throw them bows. That's what you all want to see. Well, guess what? You know, I can throw them back. And, you know, this is why I like to be out here. And his age showed a little bit. But you can tell that for Biden, I heard someone say it. I think it was Al Sharpton on the, on the Breakfast Club. Um, you know, Biden is a very regular guy. You know, he doesn't come in in it with a bunch of charisma and stuff like that. And for that reason, even though the second debate was a little bit slower, I think I enjoyed it more because um, it was it was more of what I expect from, from politics. I don't think politics is supposed to be a, a battle of charisma or a battle of energy or anything like that. I enjoyed Pence's um, slower, you know, it gave me more respect for him. I, I enjoy the way that he slows down talk. One thing Penn said that was wrong that I think people don't really understand is like, oh, America's not systemically racist. Now, my parents are Nigerian, and I understand that there's a whole continent called Africa, you know, 
And even in Africa, there are as there there are areas and there are lots of stuff within the communities where there is systemic racism. I don't know if you heard about the whole Rwanda thing. Um, there's a lot of countries that have racism built in it. Now, America sort of takes it in a certain kind of way where it's like, oh, you're saying that we have racial issues. We don't have racial issues. We don't need to worry about that. Racial training. No, we don't need to worry about that. The fact is, racial issues are part of the global landscape. There isn't a country out there that um, doesn't have systemic racism. I think that kind of boiled down to me a lot of the issues going on right now. Because when you make things about charisma, when you make things about energy, you stray away from the facts. And I, that's one thing that I'm just not interested in anymore in politics, which is why I want to get into politics. I'm not interested in someone being defensive. I'm not interested in people being emotional. I'm not interested in people trying to make people look bad. Because if, if you understand, I'm like, we got a limited amount of time here on life. You know, I've already put my first 30 years in. And uh, with the time that I have left, I want to, uh, which is a lot of time, I mean, the, the the first five years don't really count because you know, I don't even remember them that well. I do remember my fifth, my five-year-old birthday party. Anyway, um, so so for me, I don't like I, that was my my main issue with the debates at large. I think that the formats need to be worked on a little bit. Um, like, why not mute microphones when someone goes over their time? Because we don't need to hear. Talking, it becomes a contest of who can uh, go over their time. Anytime someone starts talking over their time, it immediately becomes distracting. Anytime someone cuts someone off, it becomes distracting. And now we're looking at the the contest of energies, which has nothing to do with policies, politics, science, or anything that's very important. And I think. Both debates are, are not doing a good job of that. And I think the, the whole thing needs to be upgraded. Um, and we need to do maybe like a longer type of debate. Maybe we even incorporate Facebook and Instagram into these things where, you know, each candidate has like some kind of special platform on these two things where they can contribute their ideas um, and release them in a way that, that um, sort of makes sense or whatever. Um, but the way that they're doing it so far is it's not, it's, it's not working very well. The thing is that there are very serious details to all these things. I'd rather them take one issue and really go into the details of it. Um, and then go on to another issue for the next debate, because we have the ability, if people can watch hours and hours uh, the 85 South show, hours and hours of video game streaming, it doesn't mean that they're going to watch all the hours of stuff, but we need a place where there are facts deposited. We need a place where things are being talked about um, in a way that approaches the details of the science that's going on. Because that is where we're doing a disservice and we're slowing down our own progress. You know, if we went to the moon in 1970, and yeah, we, we got we got different things going on in different places, but if we went to the moon in the 70s, this is 50 years later, you know, yeah, we do have a space station up and stuff like that. But I think if we focus as a society and a culture, if we take out some of the more emotional things and we set up things to where people can have real conversations um, on issues, people who are interested only in the details of the science, not in um, anything else, not in establishing any other type of agenda. I think that we can get into um, some fun stuff. And you say, does morality play in science? It plays heavily in science, you know, morality, um, is a really big deal. I'm not saying either one, no party is going to have a monopoly on morality. How is that possible when you have 300 million people in a country and um, it's really not split in half, but the, the electorate is split relatively in half. So obviously 
no one side has an issue on morality because there's families on both sides. There's people going to work on both sides, which means that both have a way in which they can construct cities. Both have a way in which they can construct family relationships. And you can't say that millions of people are all doing it wrong. That's why the whole Democrat Republican thing is very inaccurate. I think we have much smaller, much smaller opinions. And even the office of the president, I think, is a little bit too wide in scope. You know, there's certain things that I don't think presidents have the time to focus on. Presidents' largest issues, you know, is foreign policy. And as far as I'm concerned, you have to be very interested in your relationship with other countries because that is gigantic. And you want a president who you want to represent you to the larger community. A lot of the other issues, they need to go down and they need to be solved progressively in different ways that pertain to the communities in which they live. That way, you know, Delaware doesn't feel like California is making decisions for it. That way, California doesn't feel like Texas is making decisions for it because that's where you get contention. And then people just start saying all kinds of crazy stuff like, oh, you want me to give my brother's house away? It's like, I don't know about your brother's house. All I'm trying to say is yesterday I woke up and this, this happened, which means this isn't even on a globe. This isn't even on a United States um, level. This is on a city level. And another part that, that's a problem with it, people love to focus in on the presidential debates because it allows them to gain some distance over the actual traction that they have in their life. Same reason why people prefer um, certain types of entertainment or escapism. You know, it's a type of escapism, except for it's almost reverse escapism. Just came up with the concept there. So anyway, I think that um, the second debate was better. And, uh, and, but only bear, uh, it was, it was, it was better by, by a good, by a good, by a good unit of time. But I think we need to figure out a way in order to improve the debate system as a whole. That's my final word on it. Thanks for listening. Peace.